let's go ahead and get right into it. The first thing you're gonna need is a camera. And so I highly recommend having a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. If you have your iPhone, that's fine, but make sure you're shooting in 4K. I see a lot of people are still shooting in 1080p. Sometimes they just don't realize it because the default settings on the iPhone, uh, when you get your iPhone, or even sometimes your Android, depending on what uh, cellular device you have, the default settings may be on 1080p. So make sure you're shooting in 4K. Now, as far as the settings, you're gonna make sure that you're shooting at at least 30 frames per second. I highly recommend shooting at 60, even 120 is good as well. You get that really, really, really cinematic slow-mo. Now, 24 frames per second will be what you edit on on the timeline, but we'll talk about that once we get further along. But you wanna make sure that you're shooting in 4K, a minimum 30 frames per second, and then also shooting at the highest bit rate your camera has. Now, let's talk about lighting. Some of the videos that we love watching, the ones that capture our attention are the ones that are lit correctly. If you don't have access to lights, try to use natural light, try to shoot at golden hour, you know, try to take advantage of good lighting. That's really going to help make your images and your videos pop. If you have to use any lights other than natural light, make sure you're using soft light, a LED light with a nice soft box to illuminate your subject. That'll really help and separate them from the background. Now, Let's talk about lenses. I typically like to shoot at a fast aperture, which is like 2.8 and the lowest you can go is like 1.2. Shooting with a fast lens will help you out. Now, like I said before, when we're talking about lighting, shooting with a fast aperture will allow you to let in more light. And so now if you're letting in more light, it does two things. It brightens the image, it separates a person or subject from the background, and it just really gives this 3D look. And that's really gonna help make your Instagram reel or video look that much more cinematic. So now let's talk about color grading and color correction. You know, color grading is a lot different from color correction. Color correction is just, you know, you're fixing the color and the white balance and the contrast and the luminance and things of that nature. But I highly recommend understanding how to color grade. If you need help with that, I do have LUTs in my store. I have a link in the description as well. But having a, a stylistic color grade will really help make your video look futuristic and stand out from everyone else. And it just gives it that cinematic look. And then also colors will really help emphasize shadows and highlights and creating that contrast to really make your images pop. So I've done a good job with color grading. And like I said, I have a link in the description to my, my presets, but make sure you understand color grading and color correction after you've already shot your video, because that's really gonna help, you know, make your videos look that much more sharper and cleaner. All right, so now let's really get to the sauce. Let's get to the fun part. This is the export settings. So let's go ahead and jump into the computer so I can show you guys all the settings that I use. Now, typically you can use any uh, video editing program, but like I said before, I'm using Final Cut Pro. I already have uh, this reel that I laid out on the timeline already. This is a 4K timeline shooting at 23.8, which is roughly 24 P that's the time that that is the uh, frame rate that the timeline's in. And uh, like I said before, this is my color grade. So if I do a before and after that's a cinematic uh, grade that I liked. And then also another thing that I like doing is I like sharpening my image just a little bit by default. It's about 2.5 when you drag and drop the sharpening on there. So I just lower this to 1.5 and I just make uh, minor adjustments here, a stylistic uh, color correction. And uh, from here, um, we're gonna go to file, we're gonna go to share, and then we're gonna export file. Now, we're gonna come to settings, and then you're gonna be, you're gonna see right here on the format, uh, you have some options. So I like the default options because they give the largest file size. And I don't know if I previously said before, but um, I rather have a higher file size so that after Inst Instagram compresses, because they do compress, unfortunately, uh, you're still left over with a lot of information. Now, if we clicked here to Apple devices, as you can see, this is not enough information. So after that, or after that gets compressed, um, it's not gonna look good. So you wanna make sure you're under mastering, under video and audio. You wanna make sure you're under H2, uh, H.264. And then from there, you should be able to go to next and then you can just save it out to the desktop and it should look just like this. Okay, and so after you uh, export everything out, this is a critical step. You wanna make sure you send it straight to your phone through AirDrop. If you do not have an Apple device, I would highly suggest using 
you know, WhatsApp or a messaging service that you guys have for Android. But if you have an iPhone, uh, make sure you're using AirDrop uh, and then uploading straight to Instagram. Last thing I would say is if you don't have a high quality thumbnail, um, I would uh, spend time after the shoot to actually shoot something that you're proud of that can uh, grab the viewer's attention and you can use that and edit. You can edit it and use that as your your cover photo so that people can you know be drawn to your to your reel. So, yeah that's pretty much it hope you guys enjoyed hope you guys got some value those are pretty much uh how i make my ig reels and uh it was highly requested video so i hope you guys got some value in it and until next time i'll see you guys in the next video Stay